to The Hypnotist, the show that gives you inside access to cutting-edge hypnosis with real clients facing genuine issues. Brought to you by the hypnotherapist demanded by celebrities, CEOs, and even royalty, Adam Cox. These recordings took place live from Adam's clinic in London's world-famous Harley Street. So, get yourself comfortable and enjoy today's episode of The Hypnotist. Hi, it's Adam here, and on today's episode of The Hypnotist, we're going to be looking at smoking cessation and quitting smoking. Now, smoking is one of those um, behaviors which has a very addictive nature to it. There are millions and millions of people across the world uh, that die every single year due to the habit of smoking, and that really comes from that nicotine addiction. Now, even though some people are replacing smoking with vaping, for example, there is still no long-term research in terms of the consequences of that. The ideal thing to do really is to get your body to a stage where it just doesn't crave the nicotine anymore. In this session, I was working with a gentleman that was a professional voiceover artist. I was actually working with him mainly to lose weight um, because he reached a point where he, he couldn't fly to some of the uh, parts of the world where he would have voiceover projects because he couldn't fit into the um, the, the airline seats. Um, so that was the main thing. But he also, uh, when we had in place the, the sessions about weight loss, he also wanted to um, quit smoking as well. And he didn't smoke huge amounts. You know, it tended to be, you know, a few each evening as a way for him to kind of relax and unwind at the end of the day. So we needed something else to kind of switch that behavior with. Um, it links to very different um, patterns here, very different ways of thinking, but effectively we need to break the existing pattern and then replace it with something new that is actually sustainable and um, useful in some way. This is going to be a great hypnosis session for anyone that either wants to quit smoking or reduce the amount that you smoke. Um, don't be surprised if you listen to this a few times because uh, sometimes it takes a, a few listens for it to really kind of stick um, and let me know what your thoughts were in the comments. Um, so find somewhere relaxing where you won't be disturbed. Um, just focus on the music on on your breathing until it starts. Relax and enjoy. So this is raising standards to lose weight. Hi, it's Adam here, and on today's episode of The Hypnotist, we're going to be looking at weight loss. Now, one of the things that can kind of really make weight loss a challenge is this idea that you're missing out on certain things, that there's things that you want to do that you simply can't do anymore. But what I find is that rather than looking at this as kind of cutting certain things and missing out on certain things, it's much more useful to actually think of this as raising standards. So quite often what I tend to do with my clients for weight loss is that I have a lot of different diagnostic questions to kind of figure out what their current patterns are. Is it emotional eating? Is it kind of addictions to things like sugar? Is it binging where it's, it's kind of disassociated and they don't even recall eating the food? You know, what is it? And I'm also asking the question of on a scale of one to 10 with 10 being eating perfectly, and zero eating like just pure junk food and sugar and you know huge portions where on that scale are they and in most cases if someone's overweight on a scale of one to ten their standards when it comes to food and exercise are normally about a three four or five sometimes less sometimes it's a one or two um, but it tends to be fairly low and the goal therefore isn't to simply cut out the food here but to ask them what would it be like if they raised their standards. And I guarantee in your life, in everyone's life, there's areas of our lives where we have very high standards. Maybe it's your tasting clothes. Maybe it's you know certain areas or how you go about what you do in your profession. You, like you're not sloppy about it, you do it properly. So you have areas of your life where your standards are very high and you just get used to living at that particular standard. And that's really important because what we want to do is to get, um, in, in this case, the gentleman raising his standards so he was able to kind of live at that kind of higher level. 
It also links into different kind of metaphors that you'll hear in the hypnosis session. But this is going to be great for anyone that wants to lose weight without going on a diet. And this is the great thing. Because you're raising your standards, you're not, it's not that you're not allowed to eat anything. You can eat whatever you want. But if you eat lots of sugary food and junk food, well, then you're not raising your standards. That might be the standard of a two or a three. But if you're eating lots of fresh veg and vegetables and, you know, fruits or, you know, kind of very nutritious, healthy food, that might represent, you know, a seven, eight or a nine, whatever it is for you. And it might be that going for regular walks can kind of get that even higher. It's important to know that you don't have to have a perfect um, level of standard in order to lose weight. You simply don't. In fact, it's not useful to be perfect because that encourages people to quit. Um, and ad adherence is, is the number one thing that can actually enable someone to lose weight. So the goal isn't to have a 100% perfect diet. It's to get it to the level where it's kind of like about 70 or 80%. So generally you're eating good stuff, but every now and then if you feel like a chocolate bar, have a chocolate bar. If you want that pizza, have that pizza. But then you want to go back to having that kind of um, standard where most of the time you're eating pretty well, you're eating good food at meal times, um, and what that does is it gets people out of this kind of do or die, you know, kind of thing. This kind of yo-yo dieting where they have to kind of they can't even have a slice of birthday cake or you know whatever it might be. You want to have that kind of balance, but the balance is how do we increase the standards so that you can lose weight and enjoy the process as well. This is going to be a great session for anyone that wants to lose weight without going on a diet and uh, drop me any notes in the comments of your experiences you know particularly if you've struggled with losing weight before um, find somewhere comfortable where you won't be disturbed relax and enjoy Okay, so I want you to take a deep breath in. And on the out breath, I want you to just relax those eyelids. As you breathe in, I want you to imagine that you're breathing in a sense of relaxation. Breathing in relaxation and breathing out tension. And with each and every breath, I want you to imagine that the deeper you breathe, the more that relaxation is spreading throughout your whole body. And I want you to scan your body for any feelings of tension, tension that perhaps could exist around the eyes, around the forehead, around your neck and shoulders, perhaps arms, legs. So much so that as you breathe out, get a sense that you're breathing out any unnecessary tension that you don't need anymore. I want you to imagine that with each and every breath, you're breathing just 1% deeper. And perhaps because you're breathing in a sense of relaxation, you're able to relax all parts of your body that are involved in breathing. Even imagine that your nostrils are starting to relax. Your windpipe starting to relax. Your lungs and the muscles around your chest starting to relax. Even the diaphragm. Your whole body is relaxing so you're able to take incrementally deeper breaths with each and every breath. And I want you to imagine that you're in the most comfortable chair that exists. And I want you to imagine that the door is open and you're able to breathe clean, fresh air. I want you to imagine as you breathe in the clean, fresh air, that the feeling of clean, fresh air filling your lungs makes you feel relaxed, deeply relaxed. I want you to imagine that you're breathing in fresh air and that as you breathe out, I want you to imagine that anything in your body that is no longer needed is being exhaled. 
I want you to imagine that any tension, any stress, any anxiety, or in fact, anything unresourceful as you breathe out is leaving your body. With each and every breath, you're going deeper and deeper relaxed. And I want you to imagine that with each and every breath, different parts of your muscles are going deeper into a state of positive relaxation. I want you to focus on the muscles around your eyelids and around your eyes. Breathe in relaxation, fresh, clean air, and feel that any tension is being let go. Let go and leaving your body in your outward breath. As you breathe in, focus on the muscles in your forehead, breathing in relaxation and breathing out any tension, any stress. Focus on the muscles around your neck and your shoulders, breathing in relaxation and breathing out any unnecessary tension. With each and every breath, feel that that is happening incrementally around each muscle group, around your arms all the way down to your fingers, breathing in relaxation, breathing out tension. Focus on the muscles in your legs, feeling loose, heavy, breathing in relaxation, breathing out any tension, any stress, any anxiety. And I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine that you are at the top of a staircase. I want you to imagine that this staircase leads to a grand reception. I'm going to count down from 10 to 1, and you will imagine walking down this staircase. And I don't know if you're picturing a spiral staircase or a grand staircase. Whatever comes to mind is exactly as it should be. And with each descending number, you will feel 10%, one tenth, deeper and deeper relaxed until you arrive at the foot of the staircase in an open reception area. Plenty of room, well lit, no one else around. Starting to count 10, taking the first step down the staircase, feeling 10%, one tenth, deeper and deeper relaxed. 9. Another 10% deeper relaxed. Feeling your body getting looser. Feeling it easier to breathe deeper. 8. Letting go of any unnecessary tension. 7. Another 10% deeper and deeper relaxed. Brainwave shifting from an alpha alert state into more of a beta and perhaps even a theta state. Frequencies of thinking that take you more and more effortlessly relaxed. Six, another 10%, one tenth, deeper and deeper relaxed. Halfway down the staircase now. And I want you to get a real sense of either your body getting heavier or lighter, limbs feeling looser or more rigid. Whatever comes to mind, just become aware of what you're aware. Four, another 10%, deeper and deeper relaxed. Three, more and more comfortable now. Two, getting towards the foot of the staircase. One, another 10% deeper relaxed. And zero, you're now at the foot of the staircase in a large reception area. As you look back up, you can see all of the stairs that you've traveled down. That's right. I want you to walk to a door in this reception and this door will lead you to an empty room. Standing in front of the doorway and about to walk through that door into a large empty well-lit room. Five, four, opening the door, three, walking through the door, two, one, closing the door behind you. You are now in an empty, well-lit room, only you. And in this room, you've got the ability the ability to go through doors that lead you to different times of your life. And I want you to see a door in this room and you will go all the way back to a particular meal time where you were eating as a child. 
you were eating as a child when your father was smoking while you were eating. I want you to stand in front of that door and three, two, one, walk through the door and find yourself back there witnessing you as a child at a table. Your father is in the room and you can see that he's smoking. Perhaps right now you can smell the smell of that smoke. But I want you to climb inside the body of you as a child where you've got those delicate lungs Lungs that have never smoked, only smelt other people's smoke. And as you fall inside that younger version of you with those clean, empty, precious lungs, I want you to get a sense of disgust. That you can feel that smell really infecting the food that you're eating. That it's tainting your overall experience. Perhaps there's feelings of a lack of fairness, resentment, annoyance, frustration, that as you're trying to eat and enjoy this meal, somehow the decision, perhaps even a selfish decision, of someone else is ruining your experience. And I really want you to get a sense, a sense that this is not right. It's not pleasant. At some level, you might even say it's disgusting. And when you can access that feeling of disgust, all I want you to do is to take a finger and a thumb and just pinch it together. At the moment where you feel the peak level of disgust crawling up your nose, infecting the food that you're eating, just squeeze a finger and a thumb together to really anchor that sense of disgust as it creeps up your nose. I want you to climb up out of that version of you, leaving the child there, feeling that somehow this was not right. But there was a positive there. And the gift that your father gave you back then was a clear early association, neural pathways that link smoking with something unpleasant, undesirable, selfish and disgusting. And just take that thought as you go back through the door and back into that large, empty, well-lit room. And I want you to see a different door. And this door will take you back to you as an 18-year-old where you're trying cigarettes for the very first time. Three, two, one, walking through the door, and you're now there, seeing yourself as an 18-year-old. Perhaps you remember exactly where you were at that time where you tried smoking for the very first time. Maybe there were friends there. Maybe there was a sense of pressure. Maybe it was private. But I want you to see, see the facial expression that you didn't really want to do it. And maybe there's a packet. Maybe there's cigarettes. Maybe there's matches or a lighter. And I want you to see what you were doing. But more importantly, I want you to climb into that version of you, that version of you at 18 years old. I want you to light that cigarette and do exactly what you did back then. And just remind yourself of the very first experience of smoking. Fully associate into that memory. See what you saw at the time, feel what you felt at the time. Taste what you taste, smell what you smell, and really associate into the very first experiences of what? smoking does when there is no dissonance, when there is no addiction, where there is no conditioning, and there is no anything other than how your body reacts to the behavior of smoking. And when you do that, when you take that breath, that lung full of smoke, I want you to notice truly how your body feels about smoking. And if you do feel anything undesirable, disgust, a feeling of sickness, something unpleasant, again, I want you to squeeze that finger and thumb together to really connect something physical with the overall biological association between you and smoking. That's right. 
I want you to get an overall sense that your first experience was the only true experience that you've ever really had. Because this is before, before the expectancy of how you were meant to behave in a certain career or profession, before nicotine had started influencing and distorting neural pathways and thought patterns. This is the true experience of what smoking really is. And again, try the second one. Really associate into those unpleasant experiences. Feel that it's scratching away at your lungs. That already, in those very first few breaths, the tiny residues of tar starting to clog up the very things that allow life to exist associate into that feeling of disgust pinch your finger and thumb together link into that feeling of disgust and it's time to leave that place I want you to get up out of that version of you leave the 18 year old version of you thinking that that was a true experience of smoking go back through the door find yourself back in that large empty well-lit room I want you to go back through a door now and I want you to go back to a particular occasion where you were working in a studio perhaps bored perhaps chatting to maybe a sound engineer someone at the studio maybe a studio manager who are insisting insisting that you smoke maybe putting certain amount of pressure on you telling you it's good for your career telling you it's good for your voice see that happening climb into that version and I want you to really experience that you're doing something reluctantly you're doing something because of external pressure this wasn't an intrinsic choice but this was created from other people for their own ends their own motives get an overall sense that because this was being pushed on you perhaps there was enough enough associations between you doing something and the neural pathways linking what the nicotine was doing in terms of releasing certain neurotransmitters and feelings inside the neural circuitry of your brain and that was enough enough for you to create a level of dissonance And it occurs to you, it occurs to you that this was learned behavior and anything that can be learned can be unlearned. That you learn to associate smoking with certain places, certain contexts, certain triggers. Because it was never the case where you smoked all the time. You smoked within certain contexts. And now what I want you to do is to leave that experience, but just take away the knowledge that smoking for you is contextual. It's not permanent. So you are not a smoker. You just occasionally smoked in certain contexts. Go back through the door, find yourself back in that large, empty, well-lit room. And what I want you to do now is I want you to go through a door where you see a distant future. Because in order to reach what's known as the threshold point, the point, the point where enough is enough, the point where the straw really does break the camel's back, I want you to go through a door that takes you to a future. But it is not a desirable future. This is a future where you are about to hear some news from a doctor. And I want you to go into that doorway and find yourself witnessing you sat down in front of a doctor. Perhaps he's wearing a white coat. Maybe there is a stethoscope wrapped around his neck. But I want you to get an overall sense an overall sense of seriousness. There is a weight to the room. 
I want you to climb into that version of you. And I don't know if this version of you is two years, five years, ten years, or twenty years in the future. It is simply you in the future, awaiting serious news. And I want you to climb into that version of you and really study the facial expressions of the doctor in front of you. That doctor has got a grave expression. He's looking at certain papers and letting you know that certain results have come back and the news is not good. You can see his voice and his mouth moving and you being aware that you're being told something but it doesn't quite sink in you're being told that you have an aggressive form of cancer cancer where the tumor is located around the throat he's saying that this is a direct consequence of years years of smoking I want you to get an overall sense of just accepting that news feeling feeling that this is not good I don't know if you feel it there in your chest in your gut if you feel it around your whole body but intuitively you start to think about the future the doctor explains that there is the possibility that the tumor could be removed but explains that it's around the vocal cords it's around certain parts of the throat so even if they can remove the tumor it would put you out of action for your primary source of income for at least six months to a year and even then the doctor informs you that you may never be able to speak in the way that you've been speaking before. You may finally get your voice back, but it won't be the voice that you've had. And in fact, the voice may never come back and you may need to result to writing or using some kind of synthetic electric way of creating a voice. I want you to get an overall sense of what this means for you. What it means for your future, for your income, for your livelihood. I want you to get an overall sense of uncertainty. Like the very ground that you stand on is not stable anymore. That you have no idea what the future now means. Yes, you can solve problems and you can figure things out. But you get an overall sense of uncertainty that the future is not clear. And all I want you to do on the opposite finger and thumb is I want you to really anchor that feeling of uncertainty. Pinch it together when you can really locate where within your body you feel uncertainty. The voice, the thoughts inside your own head really tap into that feeling of uncertainty of not knowing that's right it's a different feeling to disgust but it is not desirable in any way shape or form and the irony being is that actually there's been periods of time where you did give up smoking perhaps for weeks perhaps for months and it was this feeling of uncertainty that prompted you to start smoking again The irony being that had you never experienced that uncertainty, you wouldn't now be feeling the sheer levels of uncertainty about what the future now means for you. I want you to leave that body, see your expression, the uncertainty, the anxiety, the fear, the panic. Go through the door, find yourself back in that big, empty, well-lit room. And then we're going to see, we're going to see a future. Perhaps not too long after that. Maybe it's months, maybe it's a year. But the cancer has not got better, it's got worse. I want you to go through that door now, three, two, one, and see yourself. 
want you to see yourself saying your goodbyes. It's clear that the cancer has spread. It's clear that now no operations are going to help. You've accepted that you're in the last few days of your life. And I want you to see, see yourself having the conversation, having the conversation with the people, the people that matter most. See their facial expressions. See your facial expressions. I want you to climb into that version of you that's sharing this news, the goodbyes, with the people that matter most. I want you to tap into an overall feeling that this is happening earlier than it should. That had, had you not linked certain feelings to certain behaviours, you would have never have smoked over those years. This didn't have to be. If only you could do things differently. After you've experienced saying your goodbyes to the people that matter most, I now want you to be doing the same thing to perhaps to the animals, the dogs that matter most. I want you to feel the fur under your hands, perhaps of Tess and Finn. Look at their faces, their eyes, with a deep sorrow and knowledge that actually you won't be there for them for much longer. It gives you a real sense of concern as to what will happen to them in their future. That although you are able to bring them back from the brink, they are not able to bring you back from the brink, the brink of your own existence. I want you to feel a sense of loss, of sorrow, of uncertainty. I want you to reach a point, reach a point known as the threshold point. The point where you would feel that you would do anything to do things differently. And when you reach that point, that point that if only you could go back in time, make one important decision that would create a chain of events that would take your future in an entirely different direction. If you reach that point, I want you to just let me know by saying the word yes. That's right. And that's all I needed to hear because now you're going to leave that body. You're going back through the door, back into that room. And back in that room, You are the version of you that you are right now. But you're going to go into a different present. I want you to go into a present where you've made a different decision. Where the threshold point has created a chain of events. As you go through the door, I want you to see yourself as if you're seeing yourself just a day from now. You see yourself waking up, but instead of taking the dogs out and going through the normal ritual of perhaps smoking, maybe two or three cigarettes, that simply isn't happening. I want you to see yourself with a sense of freedom. That as you're walking around with the dogs or watching them run around, I want you to see yourself not just free, but clean, breathing in clean air, knowing, knowing that this is simply day one of a different direction in your life. 
I want you to see that it didn't just happen in the morning, perhaps later on in the day. Again, you see yourself taking the dogs out and there is no cigarettes, no smoking, just you enjoying the company with Tess and Finn, enjoying breathing fresh air, perhaps drinking a bottle of clean, clear water, or perhaps certain fruit teas that you know, you know have the ability to have certain antioxidants which are anti-cancerous, anti-carcinogenic, things that are actually helping your body to heal quicker. I want you to imagine that this just doesn't happen for a couple of days. This happens for weeks. I want you to see maybe two weeks in the future. Follow yourself around. See that you were able to really remind yourself that you would rather have the freedom, the cleanness, the overall sense that real me time is where you invest in you. Invest in the kind of things that give you the kind of future that you really want. Perhaps, perhaps you see yourself with a notepad, a laptop perhaps, but you're working on short stories. But because it's your choice to do that thing for you, that feels like me time too. Perhaps you're drinking bottles of water at exactly the right temperature that's good for your voice but also good for your overall health I want you to see that perhaps you're getting into certain patterns rituals that you're able to enjoy spending time with the dogs but also doing things for you things that make you feel free give you a sense of being clean doing something not just for your time but for your body as well I want you to get an overall sense that the opposite of disgust is actually pleasure and I want you to imagine that you notice that as the days have turned into weeks that actually you're able to pick up on smells smells that were always there but you weren't able to detect before that there is pleasure in just noticing certain sensory things that were always there but invisible to you I want you to notice as you climb into that future version of you that there are more tastes subtle tastes in food flavors fruit teas that were always there but now are more obvious to you that as you breathe in air when you're outside, your nose can pick up certain subtle smells that were always there, but now you can really enjoy those smells. I want you to get an overall sense that with each and every day turning into weeks, turning into months, you really enjoy feeling a sense that your body is repairing itself. I want you to see that you have tried different things. Different things to give you a form of reward. Maybe it's choosing the music you want to hear. Maybe, maybe it's taking time just to meditate. Maybe it is having different varieties of fruit teas or different waters. Or maybe it's exercising the creative part, that different hemisphere of the brain, where you can come up with your own original stories, original stories that you could easily turn into audio books that can be downloaded, that could give you a whole different sense, a different sense of security, certainty, that you're not relying on the whim of other people. And if this future looks like a desirable future, A future that you're there for the people, but also the animals that matter most in your life. Just let me know by saying yes. 
That's right. And now I want you to imagine that you're seeing yourself there in a comfortable chair, looking out, looking out over the garden, perhaps from a summer house, with the decking on the floor in front of you. And I want you to get an overall sense that just breathing clean, fresh air is enough for you to feel that you can enjoy your time. That the clearer you breathe, the clearer you think. And the clearer you think, the more you can appreciate the progress you've made and come up of interesting new ideas for your own stories. As you're sat there thinking about the future, you're thinking about all the possibilities that the future offers you. The things that you could do, the places you can go, the jobs that you can choose to take or turn down. You get an overall sense that the future is freedom. The future the future isn't about trying to find pockets of time in someone else's schedule. Because of this decision that you've made in your past, now your entire future feels like me time. You've reached a point where perhaps because of different sources of income, you can say no to any project you don't want to do. Which means all work is a choice, which means your entire future is freedom. And what I want you to do is I want you to just think that if things get unstable, uncertain, whenever you think about the idea of just having one cigarette, I want you to imagine the idea of one cigarette and then squeezing your finger and thumb and just thinking back to when you were a child or 18 years old, that one cigarette wouldn't give you certainty. It would increase the probability that your future is less certain. It gives you an overall sense of disgust at the idea of it, not just disgust in terms of the smell and the sensation and the taste and the feeling, but also as you squeeze the other finger and thumb it would also give you a sense of complete uncertainty, instability, unknowingness. And then I want you to press both finger and thumb on both hands simultaneously and get a combined feeling of both disgust and uncertainty linked to the idea of the very next cigarette. Because you don't have to give up smoking forever. There is only one cigarette that you're going to give up, and that is the next one. Because if you never have the next one, then you never have to worry about a future of throat cancer, of disgust. Because the opposite of freedom is dependency. And even if you didn't die from cancer, you might be dependent on projects or people or things or events outside of your control. And the idea of not having freedom and being entirely dependent on things that you can't control is more disgusting than the very next cigarette that you have no desire to smoke. If your unconscious mind is satisfied that the future is much better without cigarettes being there and that already you are not dependent on cigarettes just let me know by saying yes the decision is now in the past which means you have already made that decision the very next cigarette is no longer desirable to you it's disgusting uncertain and represents a future a future of dependency disgust and reliance on other people. I want you to go back through the door, find yourself back in that 
large, empty, well-lit room. And I want you to imagine that all parts of your unconscious are now working together. Anything that smoking did give you, even if it was just a sense of reward or me time, or even certainty in uncertain times, your unconscious mind will work together collaboratively to find better things to give you those things that smoking never even did that well. It was never really pleasurable. It never really did give you that certainty. It was just a poor substitute. A poor substitute created from an addiction that took root and has caused a situation that you no longer want anymore. Psychologically, you've already moved on from this now. Smoking is in your past and you do not want it to be in your future. You will now take pride in every progress tomorrow morning at 9.30 when you take the dogs out and you have no desire to smoke, that will be progress. When you decide to throw away any packets remaining in your house, building, car, wherever they might be, that will be progress. When you throw away anything that is paraphernalia or accessories related to smoking, ashtrays, lighters, matches, that will be progress. Every step that you take will represent progress towards a future of freedom. And if you are committed to that future of freedom, let me know by saying yes. That's right. In a few moments' time, I'm going to count from 1 to 10 to awaken you. You will awaken full of resourcefulness with no desire to smoke. Smoke is in, it's in your past and it is a past that reminds you of disgust. Disgust and selfishness and dependency and uncertainty. You will wake up feeling free, feeling clean and feeling that the future is a much more positive optimistic and desirable place you will awaken with all parts here in the moment fully fully wide awake and looking forward to making progress with each and every new choice that you make knowing that simply by not having the next cigarette means that you are free and free for good starting to count to awaken you one two three waking up four five six more alert seven eight open your eyes open your eyes nine ten wide awake wide awake wide awake thank you for listening to the hypnotist with adam cox the show that gives you inside access to cutting edge hypnosis with real clients facing genuine issues to automatically receive the latest episodes please subscribe if you'd like to support the show please share this episode with just one friend you think it could help and if this episode helped you please leave us a five-star review